Hello, hello, my name is Blossom Zid and welcome to another Genshin Impact video and today we're going to be going over a Yai Miko build guide. Now previously I made a Yai Miko team composition video, if you guys want to check that out get some team composition ideas for yourself, but today is going to be more focused on the build, how you're going to want to build her, what stats you're going to be looking for as well as the artifact sets that you want to cover as well, and some of the things you're going to want to consider when choosing your different artifacts. So let's go ahead and get into it. Before talking about artifacts and weapons and all that, we need to know a little bit about how Yai Miko works. And the way she works is she primarily works by placing her elemental skill on the field, which is these totems called Sesho Sakura. And these little totems that she places as she dashes with her E skill periodically strike enemies nearby with lightning dealing electro damage. And this is where the majority of her damage is going to come from. She also has an elemental burst that does big damage and it does more hits based on how many totems you sacrifice for. It. So if you have all three of the totems out in the field, you'll get uh, four total hits because there will be the initial hit and then three extra ones. And uh, those extra ones are, are pretty big. As you can see, they're higher than the initial hit. So that is going to be important. Um, but yeah, most of her damage is still going to be coming from this E skill just over time because it lasts for like 14 seconds. It's going to be on the field for a while. It's going to get a bunch of hits going and it does really solid damage by itself. And this is where most of it's going to come through. And then you're just going to get some high burst damage from her elemental burst. So how do we accent her elemental skill the best? Well, you also need to pay attention to the fact that one of her passives here uh, also increases the damage of her elemental skill uh, according to her elemental mastery. Now, this damage increase isn't nearly as impactful as a lot of other characters uh, extra scalings that they typically have. So I wouldn't entirely recommend a main stat elemental mastery piece for it, although it is still a route you can go. Just know that it isn't as effective as the usual scaling that we get, however, is still a decent option. I also just think there are other ways to increase your elemental mastery that don't quite involve uh, having an elemental mastery main stat piece. So we're going to talk about those when we get in the artifacts here. So most of her damage comes from her E skill. We can amplify that via the uh, elemental mastery. And she very much so has the play style of wanting to be on the field for a little bit, place her totems and get off the field. An excellent sub DPS roll with some high burst damage every now and then from her elemental mastery. And that's generally how people are, are playing her. You can, of course, do some uh, main DPS shenanigans. I'm personally not a huge fan of it. I don't like the way her charge attack works. It takes a while to spin up and uh, although it can hit multiple targets and stuff and it can even hit bigger targets twice, I'm still not quite a huge fan, but if you really wanted to, you can absolutely play her like that. Now that we know a little bit more about Yai Miko, let's go ahead and talk about her artifacts here. And I'm going to say first and foremost, Yai Miko is one of the characters where she doesn't necessarily have a custom build set for her and her subsets are far more valuable than the set bonuses on your artifacts. Uh, however, there are some more preferable artifact set bonuses, so let's briefly talk about that. Right now, I have Emblem of Severed Fate on my Yai Miko the four piece here, and I would not say that this is the most beneficial set bonus for your Yai Miko, but this is a pretty good one. It allows your elemental burst to deal that little bit much more damage as well as give you some energy recharge, which if you're lacking on your substats, kind of like how I am, then it's going to help you out a ton, especially on a high elemental burst cost character like Yai Miko. However, I will say I do think there are some better uh, set bonuses you can go for your Yai Miko. Primarily, if you want uh, the best overall damage, I think you're going to want some version of Two Piece Thundering Fury and then either Two Piece Gladiator, Two Piece Shimanawas, or doing the Thundering Fury and pairing that with the Wanderer's Troop set because the Wanderer's Troop is going to give you that 80 elemental mastery, which is going to allow you to uh, deal that much more damage with your totems as well as getting the 15% electro damage bonus is really valuable in Yai Miko because she doesn't really have a way to increase her electro damage bonus outside of just the goblet that you give her for your electro damage bonus. So I will say I think the best Yai Miko sets to have are Thundering Fury and uh, the Wondrous Troop if you're trying to deal the most damage with your totems, which is where most of your damage is going to be coming from anyway, or just doing that two piece uh, Thundering Fury with a two piece Gladiator or something, whatever is going to yield you the best substats. However, if you don't really have that great of substats on any of them, then I'd recommend settling for something like I'm doing with the Emblem of Suffered Fate, where this does help her kit out a lot and helps her elemental burst and gives me some more energy recharge to make sure I'm getting that elemental burst 
first effectively. However, it's just not uh, accenting it as well as some of these other ones, but my substats are much better on these pieces for my eye Miko. So I'm deciding to go with this at least until I can get a much better stat distribution on those other artifact sets. And the Emblem of Severed Fate is no joke on Yai Miko. As we went over, she has a 90 cost burst. So getting as much energy recharge as you can is going to help out a bunch. But if you didn't notice uh, when we were going over the talents there, her elemental skill here actually has a fairly long cooldown at 22 seconds. Uh, most kind of elemental bursts uh, usually have like a cooldown of like 15 seconds or so. They're usually in the teens or something. So somebody like Kazuo's or the 60 cost is like 15 seconds. Uh, so it having that longer cooldown, to me at least, means to where you don't really need as much energy recharge because uh, you're still going to have to wait for the cooldown regardless. Energy recharge is good on Yai Miko, yes, but because you have to wait for that 22 seconds anyway, then it's not nearly as crazy. Back to some set bonuses though, if you are trying to go for a main DPS Yai Miko where she is on the field the majority of the time, then Shiminawa's is probably going to be a pretty good set for her because you get 18% on your attack, you get 50% uh, increase in your normal charge and plunging attack damage uh, whenever you use your e-skill which is going to be all of the time and it's going to cost that 15 energy which does hurt a little bit uh, but the fact that you can just keep this up indefinitely is very strong as well so if you want a high um like so if you want a yai miko that has high uptime on the field then this is probably going to be the set for you uh, but as I said, I don't really recommend main DPS Yai Miko. I do think she fits in that sub DPS category excellently, and it's kind of a shame to let it go to waste there. And I do think like something like the two piece wonders troop and the two piece Sunning Fury is the most flexible or just having like the two piece emblem severed fate for the energy recharge subsets if you need them. And then pairing that with the Thundering Fury, I do think that two piece Thundering Fury set is probably the most valuable thing to have with her. And then pairing that with what you can is going to be fantastic. Of course, we aren't going to discount the fact that Thundering Fury here, the four piece itself is also fantastic for Yai Miko. It increases your electro charge superconduct by 40% and triggering such effects decreases her elemental skill down, uh, skill cooldown by one second, and which is pretty good. Even though it already has a low cooldown, that additional one second is uh, pretty nice, especially because her E can kind of function as a pseudo dodge to reposition yourself on the field. So I do like this set and uh, it does increase your reaction damage, but Wonders Troop also increases your reaction damage. Uh, while also giving you elemental mastery that's going to scale on your totems even further. So I think that's a little bit more valuable, although the utility behind Four Piece Thundering Fury is still nice. All right, talking about main stats for your Yai Miko, you're, you can pretty much just build her as a traditional DPS. We have the attack percent, the electro damage bonus, and the crit rate or crit damage helmet, whatever is going to suit you best for your best ratios. Uh, and that is just kind of the traditional Yai Miko. If you want like a good sub DPS Yai Miko or even a main DPS Yai Miko, that's going to be fantastic. If you want to focus purely on totem damage, then you are going to want an Elemental Mastery Sands here uh, to make those totems deal as much damage as you can. And then you're going to be looking for some attack percent substats to make up for the fact that you are missing the attack percent at that point. But the Elemental Mastery will really uh, take you there. Um, however, if you do focus in on some good elemental mastery on your substats, then you're also going to be feeling pretty good yourself. And that's kind of what I've done here. I built her in the traditional attack percent, electro damage bonus, crit rate, crit damage, but then my substats are heavily focused on having a good split between crit rate and crit damage, and then also looking for as much elemental mastery as possible and some energy recharge where we can fit it. And uh, I, I really do like these artifacts. These all really do accentuate Yai Miko very well. And I'd say my stats for Yai Miko are pretty awesome, and she's probably one of my better built characters, um, even if the set isn't as optimal as it could be. All right, and before we move on to weapons, I'll go over each and every one of the artifacts I currently have on so you can see what I'm going to be using for the video and uh, reference to how I got the stats that I did. So let's uh, briefly go over those. All right, as for weapons for Yai Miko, you have a few choices. She has some pretty good options. I'm going to be using Kagura's Verity because I did get lucky enough to get one, which I'm actually very excited for. I actually have not tested this on her because I just finished uh, grinding out the levels for it. So I'm pretty excited for that. But it is a fantastic weapon for her. It is basically tailor made for her kit where you can stack up some extra elemental skill damage and you get crit damage. It's got a decent base attack. This is basically made for Yai Miko and it works very well on her. However, it's not the only option you have for if you have some other five star catalysts, those are going to be some pretty good options for it, especially the ones that focus around crit rate or crit damage as their uh, subsets. Those are going to be really good options for it. 
uh, basically those DPS oriented catalysts. But if you don't have a five star catalyst, you're not out of luck. Thankfully, uh, something like the Winsith is fantastic for Yaimiko. She's one of the few characters uh, that can take advantage of all three buffs of the Winsith. The Winsith here having a decent base attack, a good crit damage substat, but then the passive here is what makes the Winsith really interesting. Whenever she takes the field, they gain a random theme song for 10 seconds, and uh, this can only be applied every 30 seconds. But like uh, at higher refinements here, the attack is increased by 100. 20 percent uh the elemental damage is increased by 96 percent and uh the elemental uh mastery is increased by 40 or by 480 and you can only get one of these buffs at a time but they're all uh, you know fantastic for yai miko and are really good for her kit so she is one of the few characters that can take advantage of all of those so if you got a Witsith for your yai miko it's a really good option and it actually does beat out some of the five stars uh, depending on what buff you get, but all of them are still good on her. So this is a fantastic four star option and the best four star option in my opinion. Other four stars you can look out for, the most free to play friendly one being the map of Mare, having that uh, elemental mastery uh, subset to increase some of your damage as well as increase your elemental uh, damage there is pretty nice. It's nothing too crazy, but still pretty solid. The solar pearl is also an excellent uh, weapon for Yai Miko. It increases her elemental burst damage and her elemental skill damage. Uh, via its passive there and has the crit rate passive or subset which is fantastic uh, something like the Hakushin ring isn't too bad especially if you're planning to run her in an electro charge com because then you can buff both the uh, electro damage and the uh, hydro damage which is really nice and uh, this also has an energy recharge subset so if you're really lacking there that's pretty nice for her as well uh, if you're looking for a main DPS AI, you could do something like Dodo Coat Tails. I don't think it's that fantastic. You could do some sort of wacky charge attack build with her if you really wanted to, but I don't quite recommend it. Something like the Sacrificial Fragments is also an option if you're looking to try and deal a bunch of totem damage. But I do think that something like the Widsith is still a much better option. Just trying to give you guys as many options as you can. Um, the new free to play Oathsworn Eye also isn't that bad of a weapon. Uh, it has the attack percent substat here, and then it increases your energy recharge by 48% at R5 here for 10 seconds, helping with her energy problems. And uh, if you have something like the Oathsworn Eye, then I would uh, probably do something like a main stat elemental mastery piece at that point, just because you're getting your attack from here and you can afford to lose that attack there and gain some more elemental mastery to make sure your totems are dealing that much more damage. Um, and I would kind of build her like that if you decided to go that route with this weapon. But as I said, overall, we'd sit the best one, probably second best is Solar Pearl and then something like Map Mare underneath it. And then all of the others are relatively at the same level and you'll have to adjust your build accordingly for your Yai Miko. All right, and we're not going to go over any constellations. I don't have any. My Yai Miko is C0, but they are pretty solid. Uh, if you have like your C1 or C2, those are pretty good for her. Um, her C4 is also pretty good. And, like she has some pretty decent constellations. And if you're going for them, then you'll benefit from them. But you don't need to. She's still a fantastic unit at C0 here. And my stats on her are 1558 on the attack, 180 elemental mastery, which is just that nice flat number there. And then I have 63% crit rate with 189% crit damage with 156 uh, percent energy recharge my electro damage bonus is only at 46 because i'm only relying on the goblet here and i don't have any other stats helping me there but this is really well rounded i have solid elemental mastery i have solid attack solid crit rating crit damage and then i have decent enough energy recharge where i'm never really having problems with getting my elemental burst on time uh so i really love the stat distribution of this yai miko and my yai miko right now and i really hope to get some art effects uh, with better set bonuses for her to improve her even more. All right, so that's the build. Let's go ahead and show it off. We'll go ahead and show off her e skill damage and her elemental burst damage, just so you have an idea of how much those actually do. So let's go ahead and uh, pay our flower friends a visit. Let's go ahead and pay a visit to our friendly Pyro Regisvine here. We'll go ahead and get a shield down with Kokomi here, and then we'll use Yai Miko. Get an idea how much her e skill actually does per hit here uh, with the Kagura's Verity, so you guys can see what kind of damage you can expect out of this build. You see, we're doing about 6,500 per elemental skill hit. And uh, this is a really solid point. If you really do want to focus on that elemental skill, try to get it towards the 10K range, then you're going to want to focus in on that elemental mastery, as I said before. Uh, but this is a really solid damage uh, for what she has going on right now. All right, so we showed off the elemental skill. Let's go ahead and show it off with the elemental burst as well. And this build is definitely a bit more oriented towards the elemental burst, considering I have the... Uh, 
Emblem of Severed Fate set on. So this is a good balance between her E skill and her elemental burst in terms of damage. So here's the damage you can typically expect. Around 20k on the uh, the uh, two through four hits there and 16k on the initial hit, which is a pretty solid amount of this thing's HP, as you can see here. And this is, uh, as I said, a good balance between her E skill doing damage and her elemental burst dealing some good damage. And uh, that is about what you can expect from that. Of course, you can lean into one aspect more than the other via how you build your Yai Miko. But this, for the most part, is uh, how she's going to play. All right, and one final showcase here. We are going to use uh, our whole team here, minus Fischl. Just going to use Kazuha for a buff and whatnot. Get the shield down with Kokomi. Be applying a little bit of Hydra with her as well. And uh, just so you guys can see the potential of Yai Miko here. Let's go ahead and do that. Get the third one here, get the elemental burst going, recast our E skill, and you can see how this can uh, start to deal some really solid damage. And when you get buffed with Kazuha there, you can start dealing like 8k. And if uh, you don't have Kazuha or something, you could easily have Sucrose here. Uh, I mentioned some of this in the team com build section or the team com builds video that I made the other day. So if you want to learn more about that, then go ahead and check out that video. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the build. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a fantastic character. I am really loving her design and I can't wait to see how she pairs with Ayato, who's going to be a hydro unit. And Electro Charge is one of my favorite reactions. And yeah, Miko is seeming to excel very well at that uh, at that particular team comp play style. I'm very excited to see that. But let me know what you guys thought of this video in the comment section below. Hopefully it helped you with your Yai Miko build, gave you some good tips, uh, told you something maybe you don't know. And I would like to see your builds in the comment section below. So let me know. But other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. My name is Blossoms and I'll get you in the next one. Peace.